Hi, welcome to part 3 of the Blue Rift tutorial series. In this video, we'll be going over the basic starting point of starting a new Blue Rift. You may be wanting to get creative with the look of your Blue Rift, but for this first time, we just want to get a basic starting point so that we can start messing with the tools. If you go up to the File tab and then choose New Level, you will be brought up with a Map Template Chooser. If you choose Time Rift Water, this will give you a basic starting point for the visuals of the Blue Rift. Now that we have our template loaded, we can see a very, very simple blue rift. There's a rotating block, a checkpoint, and a timepiece. If we click play right now, we can play this. It even has an opening cutscene. As you can see, the checkpoints work, and we can collect the timepiece. This is more or less the type of level we're going to be making. A level that has you platforming, getting checkpoints, and then eventually getting to a timepiece. In order to move around your level in the editor, simply hold down right click, which will then make, give you camera control when you drag your mouse. In order to move around, you use the W, A, S, and D keys. It's pretty simple to move around. By using the scroll wheel, you can change how fast you move around. Scroll wheel up makes you go faster, scroll wheel down makes you go slower. Though I'm going to be making a very simple blue rift, you can use the things that I teach in this tutorial to make more complicated ones as well. There's a lot to go over here. So starting off, how do we get the player into the level? Well, as you saw, this template already has that done for us, but I'm still going to go over it anyways. Over here is where the player starts. Now, you may not see anything here the first time you load this up. If this is the case, go up to this button up here and then click on it. It'll bring down a drop-down menu. There's a lot of options, but the ones that we want to worry about are Show. In this, you can show what objects are shown in the editor and what ones are not. In order to get the player spawn to show up, we have to scroll down to Advanced, and then go down to Navigation Nodes. Or, you can press the N key on your keyboard. This will then show this little object. If you click on it, you can select it. This is the player start. If we want to change where the, where the player starts in the level, we simply move this. And if we want to make a new player start, we right click, go to add actor, and then go down to player start, and then click that, which will then make a new one. It will show bad size if it's not properly built yet. Let's not worry about this for now. Let's say we want to move our player start over to this platform instead. To do that, we just move it along. But now you'll see that it has this icon displaying bad size. In order to fix this, you want to go up to the build menu at the top of your editor. Click it and you'll get a drop down menu. And then choose build AI path. And this should take only a few seconds, even on lower end computers. And with that, that will be our new starting position. Since I played the level earlier, I'm going to need to reset the checkpoint so that I can start at the beginning of the level and not at the checkpoint. In order to do this, go to the Hat and Time menu, and then go down to Current Checkpoint and choose No Checkpoint. This will make it so that you will start at the beginning of the level. If we hit play again, and then skip this cutscene, you will see that our player has now moved where they start. Pretty simple. Let's move that back for now. This is a good spot for it. Over here we have a spinning block. It's not spinning right now because the level is not being currently being played. I will be going over how to make one of these in the next tutorial. Over here we have our checkpoint, which is actually just another player start node. For every player start that you put into the level, you can use it as a checkpoint. In order to do this, right click the object and then go to player start properties or press the F4 key. This will bring up this menu, which will have a bunch of drop downs, but the only one you need to worry about right now is the common menu. Down here is the checkpoint and simply set this to whatever checkpoint you want it to be. Since this is the only checkpoint in the level, this is checkpoint one. 
If we were going to make another one, we would set that to checkpoint 2. If we set our checkpoint to checkpoint 1, and then play the level, you will see that we've started at the checkpoint, which makes sense. As you saw earlier, once we got over to this platform, it set our checkpoint to that. In the tutorial where I go over Kismet, I will be going over I will be going over how you set new checkpoints. Lastly, we have the timepiece, which is the end of the level. You can go into the properties of this timepiece to change different settings based on what you want the timepiece to do. Most of these are pretty self-explanatory. The silent checkbox makes it so that it doesn't make ambient noise. This score down here will change how what the timepiece is worth during online party. A lot of things that you mouse over will give a description of what it is. This is very helpful to letting you know what something does. For our purposes, we don't need to mess with this right now. You will see an error above the timepiece, but you can ignore this unless you're making a chapter mod, which we are not. And with that, that's the basic ideas of the Blue Rift. In the next tutorial, I will be going over how to make new objects so that you can start building onto your level.